Our uh, next speaker is Professor Inping Zhang. He's the director of the Institute of Built Environment and, the, and head of the Building Environment Test Center at Tsinghua University. Uh, Inping's research focuses on VOCs, semi-volatile organic compounds, exposure to those compounds, and control of those compounds. He and his students are prolific authors. They've authored 120 articles in international journals in the last uh, decade or so. So, Inping. Okay. Thanks, Chairman. I'm very glad to have a chance to introduce our work in the session with the high-level researchers like Charlie, like Tunger, like CG. Okay, and uh, very glad to have a chance to know all of you. The title of my presentation is Understanding and uh, Controlling Indoor Organic Compound Proteins Mass Transfer Analysis and uh, Applications. At first, I want to express my thanks to the financial support to all the co-authors and the, the, all the cooperators in the past years. And also, just uh, Charlie mentioned, the researchers uh, give us uh, light on our research. Okay. My introduction contains five parts. The first part is uh, background and the problems. As you know, the indoor organic compounds, proteins, have contributed many diseases. CG will introduce this in detail later, okay? For example, cancers, birth defects, and uh, so on. In fact, some of these pictures are from CG's PPT. And indoors, there are a lot of proteins. Formaldehyde, just as Tonga mentioned, it belongs to the VVOC. And VOCs, such as benzene, SVOC, platicizer. In fact, uh, John Little has studied a lot for that. And in Xu, maybe, I cannot find her, sorry. And the PM. Why indoor air quality problems are serious, serious in China? The answer is because of the rapid urbanization and the modernization of urban China. Sorry. This is a curve of the urban residential building area increase. In the past two decades, it increased a lot. And this is a urban, sorry, this is a synthetic water production. This is synthetic water production. In the past two decades, it increased a lot too. Okay. Because of that, in the new building, we will use a lot of new building material and a lot of furniture. And this is a formaldehyde and other VOC sources. That causes, compared to the other cities in the world, Beijing, Tianjin are main Chinese two cities. The formaldehyde level concentration are much higher than the WHO recommended threshold. And what's the problems? The problems, we, there are a lot of sources, outdoor source for PM, and indoor source, VUC, SVUC, VVUC, and so on. We want to know the source characteristics. We also want to know exposure characteristics. And we also want to know health risks. After knowing that, we can control indoor organic compound proteins exposure and health risks. But the problem is how to understand follow of the proteins quantitatively. From source to health risk, we want to know what happens, why health risks, how control. Mass transfer is a key funding foundation to address these problems. Second part is method, mass transfer. Why we will use 
may transfer here because it can understand the follow of the proteins quantitatively. For example, if we want to know the emission rate of VOC from building material, we can use mass transfer to link this parameter with the influencing factors. How to use them? We can apply mass transfer related basic laws and carry out model based simulation and experiments. Just take example for VOC emission models for solid material. All this work are related to mass transfer. In fact, this is from John Little's review paper. It is published last year in Building Environment. He listed all the relating works. The first work is Tishna. But I'm sorry, in fact, I haven't read this paper. But as I know, all the later work cite John Little's paper in 1994. I think this is a very important paper, can be regarded as my stone for this area. The problems. We take some research routers as follows. We address the problems. problems. We often use a normal view, but such study has some limitation. It often is a case-limited study and just can get the apparent conclusion. Apparent funding is not enough. We should also use the microscope view. Then we can understand deeper. We can understand the mechanism. It's not enough too. We should also use the telescope view to understand the generalized process rules. Based upon that, we can guide applications better. The third part, illustrative examples. From source to exposure to health risk to the control, we take four examples. Take one example for each. For example, for source characteristic, we take example for VOC source characteristic study. For exposure, we take VOC passive sampler study. For the health risk, we take the cancer risk analysis of VOCs. For the control part, we take how to select best absorption material. Now, the first example, VOC source characteristics. Just as described by John Little in his paper, the VOC emission rate and the indoor concentration of VOC can be determined, estimated by three key parameters. One is called initial concentration of VOC. Second is called diffusion coefficient of VOC in building material. The third is called partition coefficient. For given conditions, if we know these three parameters, we can estimate the emission rate and the indoor concentration. But there are three problems. Problem A, can we get generalized source characteristics? Problem B, how to measure these three parameters rapidly and accurately? The third question is, we found that the admittable part of formaldehyde C0 is much less than the total concentration. But why? For problem A, we use the telescope view method. This is a vertical ellipse. This is a horizontal ellipse. This is a circle. Are they similar? They obey the ellipse equations. If we define 
some dimensionless parameters we found that they share the same dimensionless equation. In other words, they are similar. Therefore, dimensionless analysis is a powerful telescope view method for solving a group of similar problems. We can get the generalized source characteristics by the dimensionless analysis, just as I mentioned in the last page. By using that method, we derive correlations of dimensionless emission rate, emission rate and the quantity. It is found they are the functions of two groups of dimensionless parameters. This is called field number. This is called Fourier number. It's a diminished time. By using these two correlations, we can get the generalized emission correlations, which can scale the test result to real environments. And we compare our predict correlation predictions with the experimental data. We found that they agree quite well. And for problem B, how to rapidly and accurately measure the three key parameters. This is John Little's model. The dot are the experimental data. It is found that in the early stage, the John model doesn't agree with the experimental data well, but in the beyond the early stage, they agree very well. What's the reason? We found that in John's model, he assumed the convective mass transfer coefficient is infinite. This caused the errors at the early stage. And by using the dimensionless analysis we found, under this condition, the concentration error can be within 5%. But in this early stage, this relative error can be very high. So it means in order to rapidly and accurately determine these three key parameters, the real convective mass transfer coefficient has to be considered. Based upon that understanding, we developed the so-called C history method. Put the building material sample in a sealed chamber and sampled the concentrations along the time. We can get the so-called C history curve. And it is found interesting that if we use this dimensionless parameter, we found these parameters away to a linear equation. From this linear equation, linear line, we get three information. Equilibrium concentration, inset of the linear line, and the slope of the linear line. But by using these three information, we can solve the unknown three parameters, D, K, and C0. What's the advantage of this method? It is rapid. It needs only several hours to three days. Uh, as I remember, Tungar just mentioned, they measured three days longer. Our method, three days shorter. Okay. And it is accurate enough for engineering. Its relative error can be less than 10%. And by using our measured data, we predict the chamber concentration. It agree well with the experiments. And from the C history method, we also developed a series of methods. For example, it is called VV air method, ventilation chamber method, and so on. 
for problem C. We found the amenable part of C0 for formaldehyde is much less than the total quantity. Why? In fact, in China, there is a Chinese standard to limit the formaldehyde concentration in building material. It uses a perforate method or extraction method. They boil the toluene under the temperature to the temperature so high, then measured the concentration of formaldehyde in this building material. We found it in fact measure the total formaldehyde in this building material. But only the amino part will really influence the indoor air quality and our health. So we need amenable part, amenable VOC concentrations in the building material. We measure this part by the chamber method. It is interesting that this ratio is less than 10%. What's the reason? We found maybe some formaldehyde is fully phase formaldehyde. Some are bought bound phase formaldehyde. We measured four medium density boards. We found this ratio is less than 10%. And by using three different methods developed by us, we found their definition are less than 20%. What's the reason? Then we use a microscope view method that is statistics to analyze these problems. We found that there is an adsorption bond between the formaldehyde molecule and the, some racing molecule or ward 5 molecule. This energy is recorded, is recognized as epsilon zero. Only the molecule whose dynamic energy is greater than this energy, they are amenable. And this amenable ratio is related to the temperature. When the temperature increases, this ratio increases. And we get the equation between this amenable ratio to the overall uh, content, it can be explained by this equation. And it is found that our predictions agree well with the experimental data. Okay. Certainly, more research is needed to understand the secrets better. And second example, Develop passive sampler for VOC exposure. We want to the people, we want to know the people's exposure for a given period. But the active sampling can only be for short interval. For this period exposure, passive sampling may be better. Professor Guo used such passive sampler in the taxi driver uh, body. They know the taxi VOC and other indoor air pollutants very well. The paper was published in EHP. And we found that in the literature, the uncertainty of benzene toluene exhaling measurements by current passive samplers and field tests are very high, are very high. So we need new method to develop high performance, high precision passive sampler. What's the new approach? This is a traditional approach. Design the structure at first, then select the solvents, then design and estimate the performance of passive sampler. Now, our new approach is the opposite direction, is the inverse problem optimization. 
we know the required performance, then we determine the structure and select the absorbents. The objective is uh, minimize the measurement uncertainty. What we want to determine? We want to determine most suitable size and the physical properties of absorption material, that is diffusion coefficient and partition coefficient. By using me this method, for a given size, we can determine here the relative error which is minimal. Then we can find the D and the K value. Then we can select the best suitable absorption material for these passive samplers. By using this technique, we develop Qinghua passive diffusion sampler for BTX. This paper is a cover highlight paper of this journal. And we measured its performance in various real rooms or real fields. We found that its uncertainty is quite low compared to the available passive samplers. And most important, it's very, very cheap. And we use this passive sampler in the seven cities along the Yangtze River, this is Yangtze River, over 1,400 homes are tested. This is a Chinese standard threshold for benzene, toluene, and exhaline. We found near half of homes tested whose BTX concentrations were higher than Chinese standards. And by using passive sampler technique, and by digesting the data in the literature, we study the cancer risk of air pollution for urban adults in China. This is the list. Formaldehyde ranked first. This is the total. Benzene ranked the third. This is the list. And we found that Formaldehyde, one for Dutch laurel benzene, benzene, and so on, are the major risk contributors for the cumulative cancer risks in urban China. It accounts for 88% of the whole risk. And this is the main contribution to cumulative cancer risk from each micro environment, certainly home takes most. Then the office, then the community, then the outdoor. The last example is select most effective adsorption material for removing indoor VOCs. Such material can be used in the active purification devices, and it can also be used passive purification. Although it's an old technique, but it's still often used frequently. Okay, the unsolved, sorry, it's an unsolved problems. For a certain duration, how to select a best suitable adsorbent. Now, by using available method, we can know the equilibrium capacity, that is the capacity for the infinite time. But in fact, it's not enough. We want to know the removal effect for a given period. We want to know this performance. How to solve this problem? We use a telescope view method. It is called dimensionless analysis method, as I mentioned before. By such analysis, we can find the dimensionless mass adsorbed it can be extracted by this equation. It, can, uh, it is composed of 
two dimensionless parameters. For given VOC and the duration, for example, for this period, we want to get the high mass adsorbate we found the material in this area. Then we can know the suitable D and K for this air cleaner sorption material. But it's interesting that these results strongly depend on the duration time. For example, for one hour, B is better than A. Five but minutes. for 24 hours, A is better than B. Then we want to suggest it the study for further future research. VOC, I think, is a part above the sea level. Behind the sea level, there are a lot of problems unknown. For example, SVOCs, PM 2.5, and so on. China is facing probably the most serious IAQ problems in the world. Challenges and chance are there simultaneously. We are studying the problems by mass transfer based on based mass transfer based approach. This is a suggested study. SVOC sourcing characteristics, we need to develop rapid and accurate method and some standard reference. And indoor SVOCs, different from VOCs, they are very sensitive to PM concentration, airflow pattern, and speed. Detailed analysis of them are necessary. Dermal exposure. Now, it ignores the metabolic effect, I think. It shouldn't be overlooked before further understanding. And apply mass transfer into internal exposure. Study should be carried out more. And more intervention study for further understanding and the controlling indoor SVOC exposure, characteristics and health risks is very valuable. The last part is conclusion. Indoor air quality is an interdisciplinary field. So many fields, so many disciplines. There are too many unsolved problems to study. And mass transfer can help to understand and control indoor air organic pollutants. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you, Enting.